Hi, this is Tom Gramenio. We're here at the opening of the Monologue Collective, which is a uh, manifestation of a regular series that we do at Gallery 270, the 21st Century Handmade Print. All of these nine artists have each of three pictures on display showing vintage techniques from the 19th and the 20th century. We've got carbon pigment, which is from 1864. We've got platinum and palladium, and we've got handmade silver gelatin prints and beautiful work by all nine of these artists, which strikes at the heart of what Gallery 270 is about. Hey, David, yep. so glad to welcome you here. Finally, great to meet you. We've been Likewise. talking for a long time. Mm -hmm. Nice to welcome you here personally. Thanks for being here. You're quite welcome. Thank All right, you this is David having. Haas. He's a member of the Monologue Collective, and we have three wonderful photographs to, to share. Um, tell us a little bit why photography means something to you, David. Well, I grew up uh, with cameras in the household, so to speak. My father was an architect, and um, so art in general was part of the household experience. And yeah. It collected minorly, and um, we traveled a lot as a family, and we'd go to the museums and art exhibits. And so you kind of got it by osmosis, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> and then I got a camera for Christmas. Uh, you might remember EXAs, E X A. Yeah, yeah. East, East German Street? camera. East right. German East camera, right? Clunky yeah. and right, right. You had Excellent. to advance the film to drop the mirror and right. cock the shutter and yeah. that was it was like heaven. <laughs> and, and so what about the dark room? You not only print your stuff, but you print for other fairly famous photographers who shall go nameless for our you know, yeah, but uh, you know, unless well, there's some you can divulge, which you if you want to. But just back. when when did the dark room become so important to you? Well, it goes back to when I got my first camera, because my father was an architect, and he was taking photographs of the buildings he would build. Right. And so the dark room went into the basement within six months of Christmas, and. You were his. You were Dad's printer. Yeah, essentially. So <laughs> that's how it started, huh? Yeah. Okay. And, um, it just, Being a good doting son and making Dad's prints for him. Right, and it just um, the craftsmanship, you know, the tactile nature of the process, and you know, we got National Geographic, we got Life magazine. Yeah. So the, it you had it, all these w ex wonderful. Right, and you bought there was a s series of Life books. Right. That were on photography. Correct. The volume. Right. Actually, my first education, there was called the Famous Photographer's School. And it was a correspondence course. Oh, wow. So I tried that. Kind of the precursor to online photographic education, yeah, right? Yeah, you'd, yeah. But you'd send off prints to be evaluated, and they'd come back with a. I say a critique. A, a critique written Wonderful. on. Wonderful. Yeah, so. That's what, that's what did it. After a while, I got tired of people telling me, oh, you should print it this way. No, you should print it that way. <laughs> so I finally just, um, I didn't get a degree from the famous photographer right, school. Right, right. Let's put it that way. But um, Wonderful. No, and then the printing manifested itself. When I graduated from Mass Art up in Boston, I got hired as an apprentice who was established an atelier to do fine art black and white printing for wow. other Fine art photography. And you still teach this today, you still print for other people, you enjoy right. the darkroom process as much as the taking also, right? Right. Yeah. And I teach part-time. About 13 years after I got my BFA, I went and got my MFA. Right. And pursued 
collegiate level wow. teaching. Tell us about the photos that we have here. This is, uh, this is, you know, I'm going I'm to ask you to start with 747 okay. at South Highway 71, which is a wonderful landscape photograph of these two uh, cowboys and a and a windmill there and a, and a beautiful fence, right? That's a beautiful landscape, right, David? Well, it's a manufactured landscape. Is it really? Yeah, this is, um, <laughs> they call I'm them. I'm pulling your leg, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I sorry. know what it is, but I thought it was exactly that when I first saw the photo. Well, it's, it's that double take thing. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's an elaborate yard shadow. Yes. They call them yard shadows around here where you can get uh, like an Amish person smoking a pipe. Right. It's just a cut piece of steel. Right. But somebody did an incredible job, I thought. Absolutely. It's a, it's a work of art. And I, I definitely thought somehow, and I, was, I didn't understand, of course, this part of it, but right. the rest of it was like, what did he do? You know, that's right. a, because I know you only do straight, single shot photographs right. of reality. So it's like, how did you do that? You know? Well, it was intentionally uh, I was out looking for a sunrise picture okay but in that part of Nebraska like the geography is just flat right right and the sky was there were no fancy clouds yeah. or anything like that yeah so what are you gonna do so looking around driving down the road I saw this and it's like life gives you lemons you make lemonade <laughs> right right so that's what that is right right how about how about this one here so that was Nebraska where's this one David this is um, along the Appalachian Trail in Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, near, what's it, near Palmerton, I guess it is, or Hawk Mountain. I don't know. Do you know what Hawk Mountain is? Yes, I do. It's near Hawk Mountain. Wow. And is there, is there, there's, a, there's two rocks here, and right. is it part of this also a reflection in water? as well no, that's or is that just, that's, that's just that's, the because it almost it it kind of tricks again it's another little trick it, there it looks like it could be a reflection right yeah. this kind of was not kind of inspired by aaron siskin's work okay gotcha uh, trying to push the notion of abstraction yep and yep it was it's an overlook excuse me so you're just looking out into nothing almost just like you're doing here right right so normally okay. If there was no fog in the valley, right, you'd see farmland. Got and it. Everything Got it. else. Lovely. So. so actually, all three of these kind of are similar in right. that you have something close to the camera that's uh, in the foreground, and then you have basically yeah. a landscape, but you don't see it here and you don't see it here. But over on this one, we do see it. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I'd mention is that the horizon has always interested me right and to kind of redefine what the horizon is yeah without any points of reference yes you know something like this is obvious obvious horizon there and sure it's Gettysburg National Military Park okay and this is little round top right and that's a statue of Major General Warren who was the first Union soldier, commander, officer to spot Lee's army f forming up on the other side. This wow. is Devil's Den down there. Wow. So the opportunity to kind of combine in the foreground as well as the middle ground. And exactly. Is, is, uh, a footprint of history, I guess right. you could say. Right, right. Beautiful work, David. Way. Beautiful work. I, lo I love these. I love how they work together, you know, yep. and, and as always, this is your second showing here. We've, we've, uh, this is That's your second right. showing here, and I'm sure these are going to go over uh, very well with, uh, with our audience as well. So thank, thank you, you for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for Likewise. sharing your work with us. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you.